And instead of being like, ew, vomit, she's like, yum vomit and she swims up to the vomit and eats the vomit. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Leanna if you're new and welcome to episode 17 of Makeup and Mythology, a series I'm doing on my channel where I do my makeup and also tell you an ancient myth. So last time we covered the Aztec myth of the Aztec patron god Huitzilopochtli and how he slaughtered his sister and how that story symbolized the rotation of the sun and moon each and every day. And I also got to talk a little bit about the Aztecs themselves, who were terrifying, but also really interesting to learn about. This week, I bring to you the second ever Chinese myth. The first one being a couple episodes ago about the lunar matchmaker god, and I posted that around Valentine's Day and also Lunar New Year, so it was kind of like a double whammy. I'm hyped for today's episode because I grew up watching the 1992 adaptation of this specific myth the legend of Madame Whitesnake. And I seriously loved that drama with all my heart. Angie Chu, who played the main character, was literally my standard of beauty growing up. I was like, I wanna, I wanna look like her when I grow up. I was utterly obsessed with that drama. It was my favorite, favorite drama. There was a 2019 remake, and even though it was supposedly higher quality, I didn't like it that much. I actually didn't like it at all, period. <laughs> that remake was almost as bad as Mulan 2020 was. Um, <laughs> Maybe that's being a little harsh. I think there's also a movie adaptation of this myth uh, with Jet Li in it, but I don't think that was was that good either. Most of you watching this probably have no idea what I'm talking about, so let's just get started. Let's get you acquainted with this myth, okay? Once upon a time, an immortal disguised himself as a Tang Yuan vendor at the Broken Bridge near the West Lake. And Tang Yuan is a Chinese dessert that is a ball of rice flour, and it's filled with sesame paste or sweet beans or something like that, and it can also be unfilled but the unfilled ones are low-key nasty, take my word for it. But essentially it's just a Chinese delicacy usually eaten around New Year's, if I'm not mistaken that is. I did have some Lunar New Year this year, so that's what I'm assuming. So anyway, this boy called Xu Xian buys some Tang Yuan from this vendor without knowing that he's an immortal. And it turns out that the Tang Yuan are actually immortality pills. As for what this immortal man is doing just randomly selling immortality pills to unsuspecting humans, that is beyond me. But you know, it propels the plot forward, so let's just let him. I guess that immortal was just bored and he was like, let's fuck around, let's make some humans immortal, you know? After Xu Xian eats the immortality pills, he doesn't feel hungry for the next three days. And obviously he's like freaking out. He's like, why, why don't I want any food? So he goes back to the vendor to ask why. Smart kid. He knew it had something to do with the Tang Yuan. He knew that guy looked sus. <laughs> and luckily the immortal is still there at the bridge and Xu Xian's like, hey man, I haven't eaten in like three days, you know, but I don't like need to. I'm like really concerned. And upon hearing this, the immortal is very amused. He carries Xu Xian to the bridge and flips him upside down so that Xu Xian vomits up the Tang Yuan. I've never done a green like this. I'm kind of nervous. Okay, we'll see where this goes. So he vomited the Tang Yuan into the lake and in this lake resided a white snake who had been practicing Taoism and cultivating for thousands of years. And instead of being like, ew, vomit, she's like, yum vomit and she swims up to the vomit and eats the vomit and the immortality pills which were conveniently not yet digested. And by eating those pills, she gained 500 years worth of cultivated magical powers. And because of this, she was finally powerful enough to take on a human form. She was able to become so much more powerful just because of this little boy's vomit. And so she felt indebted to him and grateful to him and wanted to repay him. Even though he had no idea what he was doing, he was just barfing into the lake. And this white snake went by the name Bai Su Zhen, Bai meaning white. She wears a lot of white because she's a white snake and she really likes white. It's this whole thing. In the 1992 drama, the adaptation that I like, uh, the story actually starts with her being captured as a young snake, a snakeling, if you will. And she's about to be killed by one of those snake harvesters. I don't really know what they're called, but some guy in the forest was looking for snakes to like collect their parts and like sell them sell them on the market for medicine or something. And Xu Xian, a little boy who was picking herbs in the forest and happened to be nearby, actually saw the guy about to kill the snake. I think he actually distracted the snake harvester and helped the snake get away. And she was grateful to him and saw him as her savior. And a thousand years later, after she had cultivated into human form on her own, by the way, she tried to find Xu Xian's reincarnation. Now I'm just going on the assumption that everybody knows what reincarnation is, but it has been brought to my attention that that might not be the case. Um, so reincarnation, in case you didn't know, is a relatively Eastern thing. To put it most simply, uh, it's basically like your soul gets recycled into different bodies. So like when you die, 
uh, your soul gets reused and like reborn, you know. Um, <laughs> is that a good, it's not a very good explanation, but you get it, right? You get, you get the gist. But yeah, essentially the white snake was trying to find Xu Xian's reincarnation a thousand years later. She was trying to find his soul, um, you know, whichever body he was in. Um, because obviously he wasn't in the same body because it was a thousand years later. So yeah, she wanted to find him and repay him because he had saved her life. But either way, she feels grateful to him and seeks to repay him. In the first version, after she ate the pills that fell into the lake, there was also a tortoise spirit in the lake who did not manage to consume any of the immortality pills even though he really wanted to. And he was super jealous of the white snake. She got to eat vomit! I wanted to eat vomit! It's not fair! It's not fair! And you'll see why this is significant in just a second. We'll put a pin in this evil tortoise. So one day, as the white snake is just strolling, walking about in the town, you know, being being human, being pretty, wearing white, you know, as one does, she sees a beggar on the broken bridge who has caught a green snake and wants to sell its gall. I'm guessing they used snake... snake gall... galls for medicine or something like that. Point is, it was worth a pretty penny. And the white snake is just like, oh fuck, that's one of my own. I gotta, I gotta go rescue that green snake. So she buys the green snake from the beggar. And if you're wondering how she got the money to do so, uh, you must remember that she has magical powers and she can just magic, magic money if she wants to. Isn't she awesome? I love her. And so she saves the green snake's life. So the green snake's name is Xiaoqing, which means little green, literally little green, which is super creative. I know it's like really cute too, huh? And the green snake is extremely grateful to to the white snake for saving her life. And she swears to the white snake that she will be her loyal companion, and so they become close and call each other sisters. Super wholesome. We love it. I finished my makeup already, and I haven't even gotten to the part where they meet. Oh god! <laughs> I need to time this better. Many years later, the white and green snakes are in their human forms and strolling across the bridge, and they meet Xu Xian. And upon seeing him, Su Zhen realizes that he is her savior from many years ago. It starts raining and he gives her his umbrella and they fall in love and get married and they open a medicine shop together. And remember how I said she had magical powers? Well, she uses them for good. She uses them to heal people and make magic miracle medicine and people start seeing her as a goddess on earth and their medicine shop is very, very popular. Xu Xian is like, OMG, how do you do it, my love? And she's like, it's a secret. Don't worry about it. And Xu Xian is like, okay, cool, you know? Not sus. Not sus at all. My wife is so pretty. Now, if you remember that evil tortoise from earlier, aha, told you he would come back, he finally accumulated enough powers to take on human form as well. Took him long enough. So he transforms into a Buddhist monk called Fa Hai. Still determined to take his revenge on Su Zhen, he plots to break up the couple. What a petty, petty, petty little man. Now I realize the drama was just an adaptation, but I keep bringing it up because it was the first version of this myth that I ever uh, was exposed to, so it's pretty significant to me. But in the drama, I don't think he was a tortoise. I think he was just a really uptight Buddhist monk who truly believed that snake and man should not be together because it was against the laws of the universe. But yeah, I, I still hated him regardless. So anyway, in his efforts to break up the happy couple, Fa Hai actually runs into Xu Xian one day by chance, and he strikes up a conversation and tries to convince Xu Xian to become a monk. And Xu Xian is just like, nah man, I got a pretty little lady at home, you know? That monk life, you know, that, that celibate life, it's not for me. My wife's hot. She's really, really hot. She's really fucking hot. <laughs> And so Fa Hai is just like, oh, okay, you know what, that's fine. Well, um, you know, the Duan Wu festival is coming up and you should get your wife to drink some Rilger wine. Uh, cause you know, Rilger is good for fertility and stuff. And Xu Xian is like, cool, cool random monk I just met, great idea. Now I'm not sure of all the properties and uses of Rilger. Apparently it's good for fertility or whatever, but what I definitely know is that it's toxic to snakes. So when Xu Xian gets home, they're celebrating, they're, you know, enjoying the festivities of the Duan Wu festival, and Xu Xian actually slips her some Rilger into her wine. He's not like, hey babe, you wanna, you wanna try some Rilger wine? He's just like, I'm gonna fucking put the real girl in her wine <laughs> without telling her. And she unsuspectingly drinks it. And because she is this really powerful, you know, cultivated being, it doesn't kill her, which is good, um, but it does make her really, really sick. It makes her so sick to the point she reveals her true form as a gigantic white snake. Upon seeing this, Xu Xian dies of shock. Literally, he dies. He fucking falls over and dies. He's a little bitch, isn't he? <laughs> 
<laughs> he's a little bitch. He poisoned his wife and then he had the audacity to die. In the story, he's supposed to be this like delicate scholar type. So delicate to the point where they got a woman to play him in the 1992 adaptation. He's not very strong or like manly, you know? But yeah, he, he dies. <laughs> So when Susan finally recovers and returns to her human self, she sees her husband dead on the floor and she's like, oh my god, what have I done? Even though it's his own damn fault for slipping her real girl <laughs> without asking. Like, what if she had a fucking allergy? Like, even if she wasn't a snake, like... So Susan and Xiaoqing go to Mount Emei to steal a magical herb that will bring him back to life. And so they do, they succeed in bringing him back to life. Um, <laughs> this is like kind of happening fast, isn't it? There's not really like that much details. They succeeded, they got the thing, they brought him back to life. He realized that even though she was a great big giant fat white snake, he was still hopelessly in love with her, even though she's literally not even human. But you know, she can turn into one which is good enough for him. <laughs> and she was really pretty as a human too. So he decides he's okay with the whole snake thing and you know, they continue living their lives and all is well. And upon seeing this, Fahai is just like, what the fuck? And he tries to come between the lovers again by capturing Xu Xian and imprisoning him at the Jingshan Temple. All for the excuse that humans and snakes shouldn't be together and that it's against the laws of nature, even though we know, we know that he's just mad that he didn't get to eat the vomit, so now he's taking it out on them. So Su Zhen and Xiao Qing show up at the temple and try to fight Fa Hai uh, to rescue Xu Xian. During the battle, Su Zhen actually floods the temple and kills a bunch of people in the process, which was not in the drama. Um, I didn't know she was a murderess. And even after flooding the temple, she still wasn't strong enough to defeat Fa Hai. And this was because she was pregnant. <gasps> so yeah, because she was pregnant, she was like, not 100% and she was like not strong enough to rescue her husband. So that sucks. After some time, Xu Xian actually manages to escape the temple and for a brief period of time, the couple is reunited and Su Zhen gets to give birth to their son. But Fa Hai tracks them down soon after and because she just gave birth, she's not in any position to fight him. Fa Hai is a fucking coward. So they fought and she lost and Fa Hai actually managed to trap her in the Leifeng Pagoda where she had to remain for several years. And when Su Zhen gets captured, Xiaoqing flees and vows vengeance. So Xiaoqing is now in hiding and she's like cultivating or whatever. 20 years later, Xu Xian and Su Zhen's son earns the position of a top scholar in the imperial exam and returns home to visit his dad. And at this point, Xiaoqing, who had been cultivating her powers for the past 20 years, went to find Fa Hai and fought him and defeated him. When she said, I am your companion for life, she meant it. She spent 20 years cultivating. I'm a hardcore Xiaoqing stan. Today's eye look is actually dedicated to her because once again, her name means little green and she wears green and like green's her color. It's a whole thing. So anyway, Susan is finally freed and reunited with her family and Fa Hai runs away into the stomach of a crab. And it is said that a crab's internal fat is orange because it resembles the color of Fa Hai's kasaya, his Buddhist robe. And yeah, that's it. That's the story. It's a classic for sure. And I actually wasn't familiar with this original version where Fa Hai was an evil tortoise and he ended up inside of a crab. It's definitely way more satisfying when the bad guy gets served at the end. I don't think his ending was nearly as bitter in the 1992 drama. So yeah, that's pretty much it for today. I'm super happy to have gotten a chance to share with you this story that I grew up with and I hope you enjoyed listening to it as much as I enjoyed telling it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!